How's it going guys? Yesterday we finished up the rye harvest. Now my dad's planting soybeans into that rye stubble. And he's ready for some more soybeans at the other farm. I'm gonna take this over to him. So I brought the skid steer with the dirt bucket over to this farm. There's a couple spots we want to smooth out a little bit. Got some groundhogs. Parked the pickup there with that soybean seed on it for him then. Dirt's pretty hard, but the planter's pushing through it pretty well. See it's closing up. That looks good. Might try smoking some of them out too. Got some smoke bombs. This is what we're dealing with here. Got quite a few of these holes and they make a mound of dirt. So you catch it with the mower and stuff. And then the bad thing with groundhogs is they like to eat young soybeans. So as this is starting to grow, they'll chew off a big section of it. It is no fun to drive over them with a the tractor. So now I got these smoke bombs, they're designed for groundhog holes. I'm gonna light one, stick it in that hole, and then bury it. They're quite a nuisance, they kill a lot of our crop. Damage equipment, they gotta go. I buried both ends of the hole and the smoke bombs in there, so that'll take care of any groundhog still living in there. I got a handful of those groundhog holes filled in. I'm gonna head home now. My dad's gonna keep planting beans. He's gonna try to finish this farm up today. Now I wish this thing had another gear. I'm back at the farm now, working at feeding the cows. So I'm running the rye out of the silo we just filled this week. The stuff's still pretty green, just starting to ferment, it's gonna turn brown. So right now it's not as stable and as nice as it will be in a couple weeks. It doesn't feed too bad green, but it'll keep getting better as it sits. I just need to put the corn silage in here and then run this feed out. I got the feeding done, it's a little bit early because I actually wanna get this tractor unhooked and hooked up to the disc bind. Decided we're gonna mow our triticale today. We got a nice weather window. They're calling for some rain tomorrow evening, but then after that, it should be nice. This is our best tractor to run the mower right now because my dad's planting soybeans with the 7220. Some days it would be nice to have another tractor. Well, I guess if that 4240 was working better, we'd be in good shape. It's gonna need a little bit of work. The house is all but finished. We're moving in in about three, four days. Pretty exciting. I'm just gonna hit the mower with some grease and then we'll get going.
Last thing I want to do is check over the knives. It was still mowing good when I finished the rye, but I noticed there's a couple that are getting pretty beat up. Yeah, this one, it's bent down, hit a big rock there, kind of flattened the tip out. These crops are pretty easy to mow the grass, as long as it's standing straight up. It's really easy to chop it off. It's got a special nut that locks it into place on the bottom. You just have to make sure you fit it up in correctly. I got that one changed too. I think everything's ready to go now. Thought I should check the cooling filters on the tractor before I get started. And yeah, I need to check these more often. With feeding, it's not a high stress job for the tractor, so don't overheat, but once you get out full throttle mowing, heavy triticale, this thing probably would start to overheat, plugged up like this. <laughs> That's so bad. I'm going to start in the field right across the road. Got all the heifers watching. If I can't drive around the outside of a field, I got to make a back cut. So I'll mow driving in the field one time. I got to make sure I go the opposite direction then when I mow that spot so it picks that up. I just made a couple rounds. This crop is extremely heavy. I need another 30 horsepower on this tractor. Gotta go a little bit slower to mow this stuff versus the rye. The crimper is what really works it to run it through those rolls. So this is triticale or triticale. It's a cross between wheat and rye. So it's similar to the rye that we already harvested. This just matures a little bit later. We like to do two different crops to separate them a little bit so we don't have to mow everything at once. That way we diversify a little bit with the weather you never know how it's going to work out. The heads aren't really pushing on this stuff, but we decided we're going to mow it now. It's heavy enough. It's going to be really good quality feed. It probably is going to get rained on a little bit tomorrow. And then after that, hopefully we can get it dried out pretty quickly. Yeah, this stuff is extremely tall and it's just very dense. six mile an hour mowing this stuff i was going eight mile an hour with the other tractor mowing the rye if i had the other tractor i could probably go a little faster but probably not eight sun went down it's starting to cool off a little bit the tractor seems to appreciate that the thing was actually starting to overheat a little bit it always struggles if we're working really hard with overheating i don't know what that means i got that field done across the road now i'm at the home farm my dad got all the rye acres covered with soybeans. He's working at one other field. And then tomorrow we're probably gonna be able to use that tractor on the mower here, which would be nice. Could use a little more power. I'm gonna quit soon, it's about 10 p.m. I have 20 acres mowed. I'm gonna get the mower unhooked. Put the tractor back on the mixer so it's ready for the morning. It's the next morning here. I'm getting ready to start planting soybeans. This is the last soybean field we want to plant for now. Try to get this done and then I'm going to get to mowing again. Got some weeds in this field. Just looking over the planter. This is the field that we had collected those round bales of corn fodder last fall. This 
ground is considerably softer than the rye stubble was. I got the marker arm out there marking the center of the next pass for me. So then when I'm driving through the field, I'm just following that mark I made on the last pass. I just finished up the last of this bean field here. Okay, back at it. Looks like I'll be able to run about one mile an hour faster with this tractor. It's got a little bit more power. My dad took over the mowing so I could get a break and also get my drone up for a little bit. We're working at the home farm, got a lot of fields mowed off already, and we're working on this bigger field down towards the bottom. One thing with this crop being so heavy, when you're mowing the last little thin strip, if it's too narrow and you're having to overlap over the windrows you already mowed, it'll catch on the edges of your mower and bunch up and pile up. I'm trying to keep it so that that last strip was about the full width of the mower so we didn't have to overlap at all. That's a good problem to have. That means the crop is heavy. When you're mowing lighter stuff like alfalfa, you can overlap and it doesn't matter. Just got one tiny little bit to get, and then that's it. All the trinicals mowed. They're calling for rain this evening now. It'll start drying tomorrow, and we'll hopefully be able to chop in a couple days. It is now Monday. We replaced a bearing on our robot scraper. Dad was working at that. We got that thing ready to go now. Yeah, that's good. My dad went through and tatted all this triticol out today now. We got some good sunlight drying it. It's got a little more drying to do, but definitely looking better. I was working at some spraying today. Didn't film that at all. So it's the next day here, guys. We're getting ready to harvest now. Crop's starting to dry, and we'll be raking pretty soon. So we did have the idea, my dad had mentioned, why don't we put the triticol in one of the bunker silos that's empty right now. Stick it in this one here. We decided not to go that route though because we need to fill all three this fall with corn silage. We wouldn't have that fed out by fall. Then we'd have to find a place for more silage. We sometimes talked about making these bunks bigger, either putting 12 foot walls on or making an extra bunker so we have one for Triticow. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We're not ready to commit to doing that this summer so we better make some ag bags this year again. We're planning to stick one ag bag down this center bunker. Got room for it there, we'll feed it out this summer. And then we'll put a couple more down where we did last year. We got the rake hooked up here, Dad's running it. Just making sure it's adjusted properly so it's picking everything up. We'll rake it a few hours ahead of the chopper and then some of this will dry. It's flipping up some green stuff that was on the bottom. But I think it's about right, it's not gonna be too wet. Got my yard seeded today. And they're just about to start chopping. They're getting set up here. He kept getting stopped there by his metal detector. There's a tiny little piece of wire there. Couldn't find it. Oh, there's still something in there, I guess. Thought we got it all, there must be a little more there. It's got the ag bagger set up in the bunk. This guy does custom ag bagging. I'm gonna go back as far as that trailer can.
The reason we're making an ag bag inside of the bunker instead of just filling this bunker with a small amount of feed is we need to be able to feed off the face a good amount every day to keep the feed fresh. And the corn silage, we're feeding a lot more of that in every mix for the cows. This spring forage crop, we don't feed as heavy. In past years, we used a V-style wheel rake that was just ground driven. Now we switched to this rotary rake. Custom chopper likes that better because it makes a more even windrow. The other one would kind of roll it together and it would pull it in, in bunches. Um, this one, he said the chopper runs a lot smoother and he doesn't need as much horsepower to move faster. It's a nice long concrete area. We could at least put one ag bag in there. This is a 10 foot diameter ag bag and it holds about a ton and a half or a little less per foot. That bagger machine is just taking the feed, packing it in, forcing the oxygen out. And it's got cables attached to the back here. So I can keep tension so I can push against it. And then he's got the tractor in neutral. It's just pushing the tractor forward. The tractor's just there to run the PTO to power the thing. I'm gonna get it packed nice and tight so it doesn't spoil. Oh, we got to the end of the bag there. We're gonna move it. I use a skid steer to move the back stop. Right here where old heifer barn used to be, we've got some space. Wish it was a little bit of a longer area, but it's not a bad spot for bags. It's at least out of the mud. So I get a lot of people asking about the strips, these thin fields behind our farm. So that was originally done to contour across the hill. It's not a really steep hill, but it does slope down towards the waterway there, towards the meadow where you can see the heifers are at. It's not quite as necessary anymore because we're all no-till, but the idea was you always have a crop established in one of the fields, you alternate corn and alfalfa. So if you plowed up to plant corn, you still have established alfalfa every 120 feet. And the water can't really run down the hill because all the rows are running across the hill. So the water kind of has to soak in. This is the next morning, got everything wrapped up. I was kind of busy, we were moving into my house, I had a lot of friends helping out, and I didn't really have much to do once the choppers were rolling. Dad was helping them move the ag bags around. It worked out really well, I was able to get the custom manure hauling crew in the next morning, this is less than 12 hours after they finished chopping, get manure spread on all those acres. And we knew there was rain in the forecast, so it worked out really good to get on the fields while they were dry get the fertilizer on and then get it rained in a little bit. We had really strong yields on the Triticale, about eight ton to the acre. We got 66 cartloads off of 63 acres. Decided not to worry about getting the drag line crew in for this manure because fields are really fit to run the tankers on. When it's wet, I'm more worried about compaction. And with the rain coming, I figured we'd get this rained in and get a lot of the fertilizer value. So we ended up with a 120 foot bag in the bunk three bags that are maybe 80 90 foot and then one shorter bag there got a lot of feed going into this year probably still gonna wish we had more but i'm glad we have what we have all right thanks for watching guys